Uh, my name is Nelly Tuikong. Um, um, I'm the founder and director of Pauline Cosmetics. Uh, Pauline Cosmetics is now East Africa's leading makeup brand. <laughs> it's so good to say that um, for many reasons. But yeah, I, I started and founded the company. Um, I'm also, you know, a dreamer. More than anything, I am a wife, a sister, daughter, yeah, and just lover of life. I used to be a critical care nurse in the US. I studied a uh, bachelor's of science in nursing. I had my perfect quote unquote American dream life um, or, um, you know, the white picket fence and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I felt, you know, once I had that, I just felt uneasy and I felt like um, I, I wanted more. But even before that, there was there was an itch to basically um, one be part of those people changing the narrative in in, in Africa. Uh, having lived abroad, you really get some very interesting perspectives about where we come from. And granted, yes, we do have problems. Sadly, there's still people who are dying of hunger. It baffles me, but it, it's happening. Um, there's war, there's all that kind of stuff, but there's also other stories that were not being told about the continent. And that was about hustle, about industries being built, about just people dreaming to make the continent a better place, right? And so I wanted to be part of those people because I was also tired of the ridiculous questions I was being asked when I was in college. You know, things like, do you live in a tree? And I'm like, yeah, I swing from one to the other. So, so I wanted to be part of the people changing the African narrative. And um, that's when the, the idea of starting Pauline Cosmetics came about. I wanted to create a makeup brand for people like us. I was in college or uni um, and I couldn't get makeup for me. It was like an ongoing pain that one day resulted in just this huge aha moment of, oh my gosh. I knew there was certain cultural contexts back then that would hinder women from wearing makeup, especially, you know, bold red lipsticks and expressing themselves that way. But I knew given the right products, an African woman, a Kenyan woman will totally appreciate looking really good from head to toe. I was obsessed with this idea. And I knew, like I knew, like I knew that it might not have happened immediately, but I actually had a five-year plan in a market where people were not used to wearing makeup because typically five years ago, makeup consumerism was non-existent. So I knew there was so much that had to go into it, a lot of energy, a lot of patience, um, educating that consumer pole pole. And then also more than anything, bringing on um, great products that worked for us because once you could see the difference between all these other imports that were coming from outside that were really meant for the international market more than us, um, you could see the difference. And so right now I feel like I'm living my five-year projection. Absolutely. And it's, it's incredible. The first time, I will not lie, it was tough. It was tough not just the reception from the consumer herself, but the reception even with um, the distributors at that time because the concept of a Kenyan-owned makeup brand was still very foreign. Um, so there was a push about getting shelf space. They'll be like, what do you mean it's Kenyan? You know, over time, the reception has completely changed. And again, I think it's part of that growth um, because it was also, again, new things always hard to sort of accept. Um, but right now, 
it is incredible. I mean, everywhere you go right now, it is buy Kenya, build Kenya, um, supporting our own um, in every facet, in every industry. So the reception has been, it has grown, and I know for a fact it's going to even get better. If I'm living my dream right now in terms of doing the things I always wanted to do, uh, seeing the market grown in how I was hoping it would grow. So some of the highlights that have uh, happened most recently, I just came back last week from uh, Dubai Beauty World uh, Beauty Expo, which is one of the largest um, international beauty expos in the world. In March, I was in Italy for Cosmoprof Bologna, which I was also invited for the Ita by the Italian trade agency. Huge! Um, <laughs> but you go to these expos and um, you are the only black person. And the products that are there are not meant for you. And sometimes there's always underlying racism um, with some of the, you know, some of the people you know, from different parts of the world. So it felt really good for me to be sitting there, not just as a visitor, but an exhibitor, and seeing other people who looked like me come over, first of all, shocked, being like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and two, just being like, oh my God, something from us, for us. And the biggest shocker was that I found out that almost 50% of the world is colored or dark skinned in some sort. Um, Somebody from India came to my stand and um, you know the whole point of being there was to get distribution globally um, and he was from South, from India and then I'm like why do you want my products? Um, so he tells me he's from South India and you know 50% of the population is dark skinned. I had no idea. I had potential distributors from places like Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, you know. I didn't go in expecting that, but you actually come to realize the world is in need of more inclusion, you know? And so that was really amazing to just take a seat of at a, in, a, in, in that global table, basically, so to speak. So there's that. And then we also just launched um, a lipstick in collaboration with Caroline Motoku. So that has been amazing. The conversation started last year. Um, a lot of that was on her platform. She made a pitch. Um, she wanted us to create a particular lipstick for a particular woman, which ended up being dubbed as a lipstick for every woman in you. So we recently launched it. Um, it's in the stores right now. It's doing amazing. I'm wearing it. <laughs> Plug in. Um, yeah, so those are I think two big things that have happened this year among many others. I've had so many challenges. I've had challenges where um, I have no money in the bank and we have products that need to be paid for. You have this, it's so many challenges, so many challenges. Um, have I ever thought to quit? Not yet. You cannot make anybody want something. First of all, when you're trying to come up with an idea or a product or a service, you have to make sure that the idea is sustainable enough for it to make you money. You know, I know there's always a talk of um, turning your passions into profits. It's not that easy, you know. Um, you have to take time to study why that product makes sense. And, and even if you believe it that, okay, it might not take a year or two, but I know this thing is going to work, then you have to have it in you to, to work through to, towards, that, um, towards that goal. Because the thing is, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, they say, even with competition and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, you either come up with an idea, if you come up with an idea that nobody else has ever come up with, you know, there's like one chance, one percent chance you're going to crush it. You know, you'll be your, your next Facebook, your next whatever. Um, 
or the upside to that is that you fail terribly <laughs> because if you know if, if the market does not want it then who are you to you know so it, it will go either way right um, so there's no problem in coming up with an idea that is common to the market and just putting a, a twist to it entrepreneurship is not necessarily coming up with a brand new idea it is thinking, you know, um, coming up with a solution to some of the already existing problems or some of the already existing solutions and sort of like putting a twist to it, right? Um, and so with that, taking so much out of you to make something happen. The thing is, your soul, you know, you know you have to do that thing. And it's one of those things like, you know, you know you have to wake up at four in the morning. You know you have to go through all this stuff. But sometimes your comfort zone just does not allow you to go there. So you have to have enough resolve to push yourself. Nobody else is going to do that for you. You have to have enough resolve to, you know, um, don't go out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're wasting time and then you're nursing a hungover for you know Monday Tuesday you know you're wasting time you know sacrifice the partying for later and sacrifice that time um, most of the time we have a lot of time in a day for us you know so if you go even to work from 8 to 5 you still have a good six hours where you can make something happen the thing is most of us are just lazy so there's only two things whether lazy or scared, period. End of story. Akuna kitu ingine. We have enough time, especially if you're young, you don't have kids, you don't have, especially people who still live in their parents' homes, they don't, they're not paying rent, they're not buying food. Come on. <laughs>
first of all, yeah, competition is a very weird thing for me because yeah, sometimes you feel it, you're like, okay, yeah, this person is coming into the space, blah, blah. But I have never felt like competition has threatened what I'm doing because uh, we are all very different, unique people. The way I'm going to run my business is very different from how somebody else is going to run their business. Um, and so I always say the pie is big enough for us, right? So for me, I'm looking at go, uh, growing a global business um, and that's somebody else might be going a totally different direction. Um, and with that also, you realize that it's better to complement each other's services, whether that is across the same industry, like you can find somebody who is doing a skincare line and we can partner with them to do something. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to get into skincare later. It doesn't mean that that person is, might not get into makeup space later. Um, but it's just in understanding that I don't have time to look back at what somebody else is doing. That is again, going back to wasting time. My job, like Oprah says, every time you spend your time looking back, you're wasting energy and time. So my job is to forge forward. If I hit a stumbling block, um, it's, you know, you, you pivot, you find ways where you're always pivoting. But if you're looking at competition as an issue, you, it will cripple you, it will cripple you. Is it there? Yeah, it's there. But there's so many other ways to do things. You can pivot, you can outcompete, you can be the first to do something. It, and it could be very small things. You can be the first to invent the self-making eyebrow thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so there's so many, there's so much to do. I mean, we always limit ourselves with that scarcity mentality where that there's only so much for, for, for us. And, as a society, that's why you see sometimes people hoarding and, you know, stealing and, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's a scarcity mentality where we're thinking that there's only enough to go around, but there's, there's really so much to go around. I mean, you can go to a market like the U.S., which is a huge market, thousands and thousands of makeup brands coming up every, 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 probably every month. Um, and that's, that's, that's not the thing they're thinking about, you know. Uh, so it's, it's an anomaly, really, more than anything. Partnerships have allowed us to sort of like uh, reach audiences across our different segments, right? Um, so I, I call it co-creation at its best. Like I love co-creating because it allows for shared creativity. That thing that I could just do myself, uh, now I've invited other people to the space where we can be able to create something much bigger that I would have not have seen. I remember we did a collaboration with uh, Couture Africa magazine with Olive Gashara. That was the first big collaboration. No, actually that was not the first. Um, the first one was with uh, Healthy Woman magazine. I don't know if it's still there. Um, and they did, they made something that I would have never done on my own. And I'm still so proud of what we did. With Couture again, with Olive, it was inviting everybody else's creativity into the space. Uh, with what we're doing with Vivo, sitting with these three other two incredible women, Caroline Mutuku and Wandia Gishuru, and sometimes me just sitting back and being like, wow, I mean, this is like converging of these three minds. It's, it's mind blowing. And so it allows you to go ahead faster. Like, the, you know, the saying that if you walk alone, you will walk fast. But if you walk together, you will walk farther. Right. So it definitely will. For me, it has catapulted my business um, because it's tripled the effort. It's triple the ideas, it's triple the resources. Something that I couldn't get on my own, Caroline is able to help get it, or something I could not have thought about, somebody else will, will be able to. So I, I know it's, it's hard and it's sometimes it's strange because you feel like, well, this person is eating into my space, or that's something that's, you know, we're humans, we'll have that, but 
I want to say, you know, try it <laughs> um, and see if it works for you. But partnerships have completely elevated my brand. Um, every time I did a partnership, it elevated my brand to another level and another level and another level. Um, so I don't know what other collaboration is going to be happening next, but I'm excited for, you know, whoever wants to collaborate. So the mantra, it's more of a philosophy than anything. Um, and the philosophy is that you cannot wrestle your problems to the ground and win. It will never happen. It is law. It is the law of the universe. It's like the law of attraction, the law of gravity. Um, sort of like sometimes you kind of just have to, to let things be right uh, try to go with the flow um, it's hard in a society where we are taught to, to take action it's about action and hard work but sometimes even the Bible says be still right uh, they say we are um, we are uh, spiritual beings having human experiences but what has become is that we've become human beings having occasional spiritual experiences right so I'm always trying to go back to my inner self trying to go tap into my inner being uh, reaching out to my spiritual side uh, and trying to get comfort in that when things are kind of wobbly and very uncertain is to just try and go with the flow sometimes it's really hard sometimes especially since I'm I'm an overachiever, so sometimes it's hard to sort of like let things be. I fight it. And so the more you fight it, just like law of attraction, the more you get of the same thing. You know, the more you, you dish out negativity, the more you get of the same negativity. So I try to do this exercise every morning where I, I, I try to get into, um, uh, you know, um, a positive sort of like um, what do you call it how do I call it where for, for like 17 seconds I try to only think pure positive thoughts so mostly it's gratitude I'm grateful for having shelter I'm grateful that I'm making my eggs this morning and I don't I'm not running out of gas or I'm grateful for beautiful night of so I, I try to do that for 17 seconds and block like okay sasa tutafanyaje okay sasa kuna traffic tutafika kazini stangapi and your mind is just on a spin so sometimes you just like and some people do that with prayer some people have extensive so it's just tapping back into that stillness which is really hard especially if you live in Nairobi have you seen Nairobi how can you be still in this city right but whatever it is, for me sometimes it's walking in the forest. I go to Karura or Aboreta, just pulling back. It's really, really hard, but you cannot wrestle your problems to the ground and win. Never.